thing is, welcome to the virtual world, the magic world of the virtual world, let's say. Maybe this is your first time that you are coming to this world with your avatars today. And that is uh, some progress that I can see that you are being here today is even a very good start. And um, most of you can hear us as, as far as I know. And uh, you have all your avatars, you're talking even some of you, and you're starting to communicate with us, which is great progress. Honestly, uh, this is one of the best starts that we have so far uh, in the years. Um, I'm going to talk about this course briefly. And this course is going to be uh, in this platform where we call it Virtual World. This is a one platform one of the virtual world platforms that exist in the world and it's called Second Life. The, it's, it's basically a company owns this uh, platform and we rent this campus area from that company and we build our campus here and we have been teaching here uh, for a long time by now. So I'm going to talk about this course briefly now. The virtual world ISB course, as we call it, which is International Student Project, which I mistake, which I had a mistake here. But then uh, it's the Autumn 2003, uh, 2023 class. This picture, as you see here, was from the Fall 2021. And uh, we have some colleagues from all over the world in this bunch of people that you see. And as well as uh, Irish students, as well as Turkish students together, we, we had a class picture in this one uh, after our final project and um, the, this course is kind of a unique course at our faculty no other course is offered as far as I know even in the uh, in Turkish territory even other universities don't have any courses like that in Turkey uh, especially in this platform we haven't seen them, we haven't heard about them. If they were, probably we would be knowing them by now. So this is kind of a unique experience for you. So just know that you are having uh, something special, uh, something uh, unique in this course, a uh, unique experience that will probably teach you a lot of new skills as well as uh, new uh, habits maybe you will start to uh, do a lot of things maybe online and virtual after these experiences so this is the uh, fall course autumn course and we are offering this course together in collaboration with certain uh, associations institutions one of them is TU Dublin it's a technological university of Dublin in Ireland. Uh, we are offering this course since 2019 together with this TU Dublin. So it's a collaboration. We are doing this course together. An Irish professor is leading this course actually today. Uh, but uh, he's not today with us. Uh, this term, he is the, the leader of this course. But he is uh, in traveling right now. So he won't be able to make it today. But he will be with us in the following weeks as well. Uh, he has some Irish students. This term, it is less students from Ireland is participating, but there are two of them uh, who will join us. And uh, we are also uh, doing a new collaboration this year, uh, an association, a consortium called Virtual World Education Consortium, which you will get to know them as well uh, in the following uh, days and weeks. Um, they are a consortium. They are kind of uh, providing us uh, a home, a shelter for the educators in this virtual world. And we are uh, meeting with all other educators from all over the world that are actively present in this world. So uh, they are helping us. We are helping them uh, in different ways. We are collaborating with them and so on. This is kind of uh, a collaboration of three institutions in this course. 
you will see people from all these institutions during the course. Uh, some of them will teach you, some of them will uh, have a lecture or a week of uh, instruction or an immersive experience with you during these uh, weeks. And then we will also uh, join at an event that Virtual World Education Consortium is going to prepare as part of this course. So we are doing this first time with them, but we have been doing this with TU Dublin for many years. So we, we know what we're doing here, I could say, uh, while we are working with all these people. Uh, there are, this is our team. Um, this is on the left top, Professor John O'Connor from TU Dublin. Uh, that's me in the middle, uh, Magua in this world and Murat Gulmaz in real life uh, from the Faculty of Economics at Chai University. Um, Saitan Madonna, that uh, you heard his voice previously, and uh, he is a consultant as well as a professional working with us for some years by now. Uh, he's going to be teaching a lot about how to build a team and how to manage a team for you because at the end of the day in this course it's a teamwork so you will need that information and you will uh, need that uh, skill and maybe the most important characters uh, that you are going to see and you're going to meet more often than us uh, ginger uh, research assistant ersin and Gigi, uh, research assistant um, Yulai from Chai University. Uh, they are very active in this course. They do a lot of background work for you guys and for us as well. Uh, so we appreciate their help and uh, they are going to be a good help and good source of information for you during the course as well. And uh, Dahlia, uh, also a professor uh, from Faculty of Economics. Uh, uh, she is also part of the team and she is running another course in Metaverse which is the fourth year course this year we are doing and we all together, the people that you see uh, in somehow related with what the other is doing uh, in this world we need, because it's, it's a, it needs a team effort to bring up those courses and make it happen so that is what we're basically uh, going to do. Those are the characters, the avatars that you're going to meet in this course as well. Um, the rest of the slides I'm going to go through in the next session, next time that I'm going to speak today. So those are about the project and I'm going to uh, talk about those project part later on. So welcome to Virtual World ISP course. And I am going to hand over to Sidearm now uh, to give you the instructions for the next step. This is a formal presentation on team theory. This presentation will be given in English. There is a translation, a machine translation, available online. This is the link if you want a copy of this in Turkish. In today's presentation, we will give models for teamwork and collaboration for those participating in teams, facilitating teams, and forming teams. Participants will be able to diagnose where teams are working well or need work. The first part will be basics and pro-professional tips. The second part will be demonstrated demonstrations of team meetings and team status checks, which you just did. Definitions. A team is two or more people working 
on a common objective. For example, on your teams, you've just been assigned to work with each other for the whole course. So some of you are part of a team of three, and some of you are part of a team of four. Team complexity is the number of possible person-to-person -person interactions on a team. For two people, there is only one way to talk to each other. So for two people, the team complexity is one. The more interactions, the more complicated. For the three-person team, there are three ways to interact. So you're three times as complex. For a four-person team, there are six ways to interact. Teams can be one time, like today, and then you're done. For example, if you met somebody at a dinner and said hello, you'd be a temporary team, and then you go home. Even when this course is over, the faculty team will be sponsoring more courses. So the faculty team is recurring. Your project team will recur for 12 classes. So teams are one time or recurring. Teams that you sign up for are voluntary. Teams that you are assigned to are involuntary. So you are on an involuntary team for the next 12 classes. The project briefing that MAGWA is going to give you is part of your involuntary team project. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Simple team, complex team, voluntary, involuntary. The, the models that we give you today will apply to all types of teams. I'm moving over to the next slide. Just, just alt click on me. Team operations model. From an analytical point of view, a team is like a box with arrows. The arrow on the left is the inputs of your team, such as your team members, your skills, your time, The arrow on the right is the outputs of the team, such as your project presentations and displays that you're going to build later on. The arrow on the top are the controls on your team, which is your assignment and your constraints. We already talked about community standards in Second Life uh, as a constraint, but the project that uh, Teacher Magma will give you is another constraint. In this course, yeah, we already said that part. The arrow at the bottom represents the supports for the team, such as the things that help you get the job done. In this course, your supports are these classes and the extended faculty. Not only Ginger and Gigi and Dahlia and myself are helping Mag, teacher Magua, but guest speakers will be helping you as well. My job today is to empower you to be your own support arrow, to know enough about teamwork that you make help make things happen. No matter what team you're on or what role you play on that team, what you learn today will help you now and in your future. Effective teams have effective members. Each of you bring an individual investment to the team. 
box based on what you already know how to do and whether you're willing to do it. Together, these make up your net contribution to the team. Commitment is your level of dedication to the team objective. It is what you do. Competence is your level of proficiency in the role you play to achieve the team objective. It is what you know. This is a simple model, and it goes like this. High competence times high commitment equals high effectiveness. Low competence times low commitment equals low effectiveness. If either is medium, the effectiveness is medium. If either is zero, the effectiveness is zero. Most of the time, individuals achieve medium effectiveness due to the constraints on their knowledge and time. However, anything above zero is a win. Professional tip. The question is, for each team you are on, what do you know how to do, and are you willing to do it? Effective teams share roles. Your team brings a group investment to project success based on how well your members cover as many as nine team role skills. The skills include leading the team, idea generating, investigating other efforts, detailed specialist knowledge, steadfast implementing, filling in the gaps, ruthlessly tracking progress versus goal, fine detailing, and coordinating the team. This is a simple model, and it goes like this. High coverage equals high success. Medium coverage equals medium success. Low coverage equals low success. Most of the time, groups achieve medium success due to one or team roles not being covered by a team member going in. However, anything above zero is a win. Professional tip. The question is, for each team you are on, what roles don't you know yet? And are you willing to learn them? Going to the top of the third column. Effective teams use best practices. Best practices address how you and your group communicate. Brainstorming is an opening exercise where new ideas are generated. Deciding is a narrowing exercise where choices are made and action begins. Briefing is a narrowing exercise where agendas and ground rules are decided before an event begins. Debriefing is an opening exercise where members reflect on what happened at an event after it is over. 
This is a simple model, and it goes like this. Either you talk to make things more open and expand the options, or you talk to make things more closed, narrow the options. The ability to expand options and the ability to narrow options are both needed. Throughout your project, your team will cycle back and forth, back and forth between opening and closing communication modes. Both are essential to productive team operations. Professional tip. The question is, in the current conversation, wherever you are, are you in opening mode or closing mode? And is it time to switch? Effective teams develop in stages. Stages address how you and your team evolve through time. Forming is where you learn each other's names and how to get in touch with each other. Storming is where you argue with each other about how to do stuff. Norming, making norms, standards, is where you get used to each other and agree on a plan and detailed action steps. Performing is where you crank out the results, make things happen. Throughout a project, your team will cycle back and forth between these stages. For example, adapting to changes in your skills. You might learn some new stuff. You'll reform a little bit. Circumstances may change. Team members may change. You will be adapting improvising and overcoming up to and even during your final team presentation. The professional tip is, when changes happen, is the plan okay? Can we just proceed with the plan? Or do we need to quickly decide to do something a little different? Effective teams evolve. Right now, you are in an involuntary team project required to graduate this course. But even when this is over, you will certainly be on some other team project. In fact, you already are in other team projects, even now. Your family, is a team project. Your friends are a team project. Work, you have team projects and other activities. Each time you participate in a team project, you have the opportunity to experience growth. You are listening to what's being asked of you, choosing how to participate, Acting on your choices, advancing based on your results, and extending your personal ability to make things happen. Professional tip. The question is, what are you willing to learn how to do next? This ends the formal presentation on teamwork theory, and I turn this over to Magua to give you your project briefing. Okay, um, now you're in the ISP project uh, course. So the ISP project for this term will be something different from the previous terms. And what we're gonna do is 
as I mentioned earlier, we're going to collaborate with an organization, which is called the Virtual uh, Education Consortium. Uh, and with this consortium, they are handling a challenge, a student challenge. And we're going to join that challenge as teams from this course. So you're going to compete against other university teams and you're going to do your project as you were doing it for this course which is also a mandatory thing for this course a requirement you're going to use that project that you do for this course to enter this contest to challenge so it's called serious simulations in the metaverse and students are challenged to build an immersive environment that demonstrates serious learning in 3D. The environment, immersive environment that they are referring to is you will create something here in Second Life. And as uh, you will use that creation of yours for a learning platform and you're going to make a presentation in 3D here as with your avatars as we are doing right now presenting things to you. You're going to do it in an event, a closing event. The project starts now for you, okay? From now on, you are in this project. And you're going to finalize this project in December 2nd. Please note these deadlines. December 2nd is your last day that you're going to present your presentation. The Evaluation criteria are authenticity, accuracy of content, balanced sites without bias, accessible aesthetic appeal, interaction and immersion, and presentation. So there are five criteria that your project is going to be evaluated on. There will be more details and a rubric, a more detailed rubric that we're going to present to you. It will be in your course syllabus as well every time and uh, whenever you need it you can reach it through online course site that we have as well as we're going to explain that more in detail i just don't want to give you all the information right now and make you confused so but those are the basic criteria that we're going to use okay the key points to remember 70 percent of your total grade will be this in this course this project that you're going to do which ends in December 2nd the student challenge so that is the 70% of your total grade you'll be working in your assigned teams as today you know pay attention to evaluation criteria when you're preparing that presentation and the creation of yours uh, you should pay attention to the criteria because each one of them will be evaluated and then participation is very very important in this course today you are here you hear about this that you are in this project and it starts today if you were not here you didn't know that until next week let's say then you are missing very valuable time you're, you're missing out on things and from now on you will start to learn things you will adapt here it will take time and you will start doing things new skills and until December 2nd you need every one of them to make your project successful so please participate the course sessions that we have and also we will have extra sessions which is run in collaboration with virtual education consortium on Saturdays ginger will provide you with all those events they will let you know from your whatsapp groups and the other communication channels and please show up in those events as much as you can and try to learn the skills that you're being taught okay and the most important it's an interesting course in my opinion it's you know you're coming with your avatars maybe that's the first time you're having a course in a witch costume or in an angel costume or whatever in your life so have fun but at the same time learn learn everything that we try to show you learn everything that you see around be curious and learn as much as you can this could be 
something that you're going to use in your future. 